You're welcome, sir. And the acting head of the Department of Agricultural and Bioresources Engineering, Dr. Ibukun Adekola Ola. You're welcome, sir. You may wish to know that before now, most of us only know about the Ten Commandments. But today, from the Department of Agricultural and Bioresources Engineering, in the College of Engineering, please let's welcome our 76th inaugural lecturer, a one-time dean of the same college, a professor of soil and water engineering, who will be taking us through his foray into soil and water dynamics as the 11th commandment. Ladies and gentlemen, Professor Adewumi Johnson Kayode. Thank you very much. We also welcome all the Adewumi's family and friends seated here. The Colange and Agri Engineering family in Popu, you are highly welcome. And to you, our special guest, please, sir, permit me to single out one of our founding fathers, Professor Julius Okoji, a former vice chancellor of this university. You're welcome, sir. Right now, to present the inaugural lecturer and give the opening remarks, let us welcome our vice chancellor once again, Professor Olusola Babatunde Kenyde. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, the Deputy Vice Chancellor Academic, the Deputy Vice Chancellor Development, the Registrar of the University, the Borsa, the University Librarian, the inaugural lecturer, Professor Johnson Kayo the Dean, College of Engineering, the acting head, Department of Agricultural and Bioresources Engineering. Please permit me to say that yesterday afternoon, the former acting head of Department of Agricultural and Bioresources Engineering, Dr. A. Ola, was pronounced by the Governing Council as a professor. Professor Ola, you're welcome. All the deans and directors here present, members of the Adewumi family, members of the university community, gentlemen of the press, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. Before I call on Funabites, permit me to also specially welcome a one-time dean of the College of Environmental Resources Management a one-time deputy vice chancellor of the University of Agriculture, a one-time acting vice chancellor of the University of Agriculture, a one-time vice chancellor of the University of Agriculture, indeed the second substantive vice chancellor of the University of Agriculture, a one-time vice chancellor of the Bell's University of Technology, a one-time executive secretary of the National Universities Commission for 10 years, our own emeritus professor, Julius Amioba Okoji. You are welcome, sir. Please take your seat, sir. You're welcome. It's a pleasure to have you at this program, sir. Thank you very much for making it. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, I have standing beside me the inaugural lecturer of today. Professor Johnson Kayode Adewumi. It is with great delight that I welcome you all to the 76th inaugural lecture of the Federal University of Agriculture, Abeokuta, Nigeria. Today's inaugural lecturer, Professor Johnson Kayode Adewumi, was born on November 30th, 1957, to the family of late Chief Josiah. Babatunde Adewumi and late Madame Maria Folake Adewumi ne Babalola, both of Obo Ayegunle, Ikiti, local government area of Kwara State. His educational background. Professor Adewumi had his primary education at St. Luke's LEA Primary School between 1963 and 1970 in Obo Ayegunle, in Kwara State. 
he proceeded to Baptist Grammar School, Igbaja, Kwara State, between 1971 and 1975, where he obtained West Africa School Certificate in 1975. Professor Adewumi then proceeded to Kwara State College of Technology, the School of Basic Section, between 1975 and 1977, with Kwara State Scholarship to obtain his advanced level certificate. After completion of his advanced level, Professor Adewumi proceeded to Amadu Bello University, Samaru Zaria, for his Bachelor of Engineering degree in Agricultural Engineering through Kwara State Scholarship between 1977 and 1980, and graduated with a second class honors upper division in June 1980. Between 1980 and 1981, he proceeded on his NYSE in Ondo State and was posted to OWO, Ondo State Ministry of Agriculture, Engineering Division. And he completed his NYSE in August 1981. In 1982, Professor Adewumi enrolled for his master's degree program at Amadu Bello University, Zaria Cardinal State, to study soil and water engineering, which he completed in 1985. In addition, he attended seventh advanced postgraduate diploma in international irrigation and soil management between October to December 1986 at the Volcanic Center in Bedagan in Israel. Professor Adewumi taught both undergraduate and postgraduate students before securing World Bank assistance to undergo his PhD bench work at Cranfield University in Silso Campus 1994. On returning to Amadou Bello University, Zaria, he successfully completed his PhD degree in 1998 with specialization in the broad area of soil and water engineering, irrigation, hydrology, soil and water conservation, erosion, and damage. Professor Adewumi also attended an intensive course on fundraising fundamentals at ABU Zaria and intensive course on internet for fundraising, both in 2003. He attended first regional symposium on farming system approach to research extension and training in Africa, held in Kenya in 1993, and farming systems assessment of water harvesting in Western and Central Africa, held in Niamey, Niger Republic, organized by FAO Regional Office for Africa in Accra, Ghana, in 1995. Professor J.K. Adewomi has a redeemed Christian Church of God postgraduate diploma in theology and a redeemed Christian Church of God graduate course on School of Discipleship, SOD, obtained 2019. In addition, he attended West Africa Water Resources Capacity Building Network in Accra, Ghana in 2007 and review policy irrigation practices in Ghana in the year 2019, courtesy the Netherlands Embassy, and also the review irrigation development practices for the Northwestern Nigeria in the year 2004, courtesy of FAO and the Emplan Group in Nigeria. He also served as consultant to the federal and state governments, private and international organizations like the World Bank in a number of soil survey, reconnaissance survey, and assessment of water and soil testing projects his work experience. Professor Adewumi was employed as assistant lecturer at the National Institute of Water Resources, Kaduna, in 1981, after the completion of his NYSE, where he taught for one year before joining the Department of Agricultural Engineering at Amadu Bello University, Zaria, as a graduate assistant in June 1982. While at ABU Zaria, Professor Adewumi rose through the rank to the position of reader, effective October 1st, 2003, before transferring his services to Federal University of Agriculture, Abe Okuta, in November 2005, where he became a professor. Both at ABU Zaria and the Federal University of Agriculture, Abe Okuta, Professor Adewumi has engaged in teaching both undergraduate and postgraduate courses since his assumption of duty 
in November 2005. He has successfully supervised 18 PhD students and 10 MSc students, both at ABU and FUNAB. Professor Adewumi has to his credit over 84 publications, of which 57 are in journals, while the remaining are in proceedings, technical reports, and contributions to chapter in books. Professor Adewumi has spent a total of 41 years in teaching and research in the university system. He has also served as external examiner to five different institutions for MSc and PhDs in Nigeria and external assessor to eight different institutions in Africa, including the University of Ghana in Accra for leadership and professorial position. In addition, Professor Adewumi was a member of the current team for accreditation to three different universities on five different occasions and member NUC accreditation team to more than nine different universities on 13 different occasions. And also was an external assessor for Nigerian National Merit Award in the year 2013. For Professor Johnson Kayo de Adewumi, it wasn't only academics and academics. He had some administrative experience. At Amado Bello University's area, he was the Deputy Dean Faculty of Engineering, Departmental Postgraduate Coordinator, Dean's Assistant on General Courses, Member Faculty of Engineering Admissions Committee, Member Departmental Consultancy Service, and so on and so forth. At the Federal University of Agriculture, Abe Okuta, Professor Adewumi was one time chairman committee of deans and directors. That was between 2017 and 2018. He was a team leader, ARCN research proposal from Agri Research Council of Nigeria in 2010. And of course, he couldn't have been the chairman of CODAD without being a dean. Between the years 2013 to 2018, Professor J.K. Adewumi was the dean, College of Engineering of our university. And before getting to that position, he was head Department of Agricultural Engineering from October 1st, 2012 to 31st July, 2013, while also being the Deputy Dean of the College of Engineering and so on and so forth. Having served that university meritoriously, Professor J.K. Adewumi also received a number of commendations from former acting Vice Chancellor Professor Shola Adamson from the Dean of Engineering from Vice, and including Vice Chancellor's Productivity Award in 2014. Professor J.K. Adewumi also belonged to several professional bodies, including being a chartered engineer of Engineering Council of the United Kingdom, member Council for the Regulation of Engineering Practice in Nigeria, current member the Institution of Agricultural Engineers in the United Kingdom, and member Nigerian Society of Engineers. In conclusion, distinguished guests, Professor Adewumi married late Mrs. Ruth B. Adewumi Niafolabi, and they are blessed with four children, Mr. Biodun Adewumi, Mrs. Adebola Omolola Obe Ni Adewumi, Kende Ebenezer Adewumi, and Dr. Taye Samson Adewumi, a granddaughter, Mojirola Obe, and a grandson, Moyosore Obe. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, it is my pleasure to invite engineer Professor Johnson Kayo de Adewumi from the Department of Agricultural and Bioresources Engineering to present his inaugural lecture titled Soil and Water Dynamics as the 11th Commandment. So sit down while you are informed of the 11th commandment that you have not known about, Professor J.K. Adewumi. Mr. Vice Chancellor, sir. Deputy Vice Chancellor, Administrative. Deputy Vice Chancellor, Academic. 
the registrar of the university, the bossa, the university librarian, member of the university governing council, members of the university senate, chief executive of other institutions, my dean college of engineering, deans of colleges, student affairs, and PG school, director of institute center and unit, acting head of department of agric and bioresources engineering, other heads of departments, academic and professional colleagues, presidents and professional associations, all non-teaching staffs, member of my immediate and extended families, friends and well-wishers, gentlemen of the press, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. Great Funabite. It's not loud enough. Great, great Funabite. Thank you very much. Mr. Vice Chancellor, before I continue, it is with grace and mercy of God that you see me standing here today. In my church, they say May is the month of grace, is the month of favor, and the month of mercy. And it is that mercy that is making me to stand in front of you today. And I thank the university, the university communities, my College of Engineering, for making it possible for me to be here with the help of God. Thank you. The 11th commandment you want to hear, and I will give you that 11th commandment today. It applies to me, it applies to you, it applies to everybody. But before I get there, agriculture, we are in the University of Agriculture, and therefore agriculture, is the cultivation of soil for productions of crops and the rearing of animals for the benefit of man. But engineering is the definitions, it's a discipline, both art and acquiring and applying scientific, economic, social, and practical knowledge to design and build structures, machines, devices, system materials, and process for the provision of improvements of the lives and well-being of people. But what is agricultural engineering? Agricultural engineering is combining two professions together, even more. Apart from the cultivation of crops, of soil for production of crops, and rearing animals, engineering is another discipline. But to go straight to tell you that agricultural engineering is the using the principle of engineering combined, using all the principles of engineering combined to solve agricultural problems. What are all these principles? The principles of mechanical engineering, the principle of civil, the principle of electrical, and then you go into the deep and say the principle that is solving using for irrigation, the principle of farm mechanization, the principle using for drainage, the principle for groundwater, the principle that is making us to live a comfortable life and, and, and do well. That is actually what we mean by agricultural engineering. Sometimes in 1905, there is a, a, an old man called Davidson who sat down and developed a curriculum for agricultural engineering. In the process, he met other colleagues in America and formed an association called American Society of Agric Engineers. That was now in 1907. In the process, the International Congress of Agricultural Engineering held in Belgium in 1930 
adopted formally agricultural engineering. But Nigeria own agricultural engineering is still, was still strange to them in our late 60s. But some of our Nigerians have gone abroad to study agricultural engineering, but yet to be available in the country. But very early 1970s, very, very early, agricultural engineering was incorporated into the curriculum of Nigerian university, but adopted by this well-advanced uh, university, uh, first generation university of ABU, of UNSUKA, of that of UI, and uh, so many universities today. They have adopted and put in their curriculum because of the importance of that course, and they are running agricultural engineering. Before I move ahead, there is a relationship between agriculture and engineering. If you will notice, you see agricultural engineering in the middle, but relating to both soil and relating to other areas. Is it biology, is it chemistry, is it physics? Is it animal production? Is it plant production? Agricultural engineer is very uh, important. But what is the importance of agricultural engineering to agricultural science? You can see the timing of village, the tillage will go in because without it, your well mechanized farming cannot be practiced. You have the technology, you have uh, what it takes you to pulverize the soil and make your farming conducive. And because of this, in the beginning, we are having very small students admitted into agricultural engineering. Sometimes you see five students, you see 11 students, you see six students. When I enter ABU, who are nine for that year? Thank you, sir. Who are nine for that year? But our senior, they were six, they were three. And this makes us to think what we can do to promote agricultural engineering. And therefore, that word agricultural engineering was now incorporated into four and split into four different parts. Thank you. The agricultural and bioresources engineering, of which you now, for now is practicing now, agricultural and biosystem engineering. Agricultural and environmental engineering, agricultural and biological engineering. That agricultural engineering again is divided into various options. We have farm power and machinery options. We have soil and water engineering, including land reclamation and conservation. We have crop processing and storage of engineering, farm structures and environmental engineering, farm electrifications and the ICT. Still talking about water. We cannot go ahead practicing agriculture if we don't have knowledge of water. We have integrated water resources management, which has three principles involved. The water resources issues, the water resources and policy, the RWRM plan and implemented, monitoring and evaluation of uh, implementation. We use low quality water in agriculture and waste water and seaweed for farming, but we need to treat it, excuse me. Irrigated agricultural development and their benefits, cost and impact environmental impact of improved water productivity in agriculture, especially irrigation. And then the drainage for farm and urban, an environmental impact as a result of flooding. Before I go ahead, just a little statistics that I got from FAO, that about 97% of the world water resources is in the oceans and sea, and it's too salty for most productive uh, uses. Of the 3% that is available, they are locked up as fresh water, but two thirds of them are in the deep aquifers, ice caps, glaciers, 
and we cannot do much of it. Much of the flow of coins is seasonal flood as a result of heavy rainstorm. The rain will come to complement what is available. According to the FAO 2010B, that as of 2010, the world population is 6.9 billion. I'm going to 8.3 billion in year 2030. And we'll hit 9.1 billion by 2050. What is the implication of this? More human beings are coming up and struggling for the available land. And if we are not careful, that remaining available land may not be enough to feed us. So we must do something if we are not supposed to go into extinction. Let me just point your attention to my last, my last bullet there for people, for you to know the importance of what I'm saying. Production of one kilo of rice, one kilogram of rice, for example, requires about 3,500 liters, just a kilogram of rice. One kilo of beef that you normally take, some 15,000 liters. And a cup of coffee, if you are taking coffee, I see liftings or anything, about 140 liters. This dietary shift is the greatest to impact on water consumption over the past 30 years. The World Food Challenge. In 2008, the search for food crisis has driven almost 110 million people into poverty. And then added about 44 million to it that have gone undernourished. So 925 million people go hungry because they cannot afford to pay for the price of water to farm and eat. Because as a human being, we spend most 50 to 80% of our resources, our income on food. So the remaining, what do we do with it? So we started looking at uh, how females are also farming and men are also farming and which one is better. But usually, men has upper hand because they get more input faster than the women. Agriculture contributes to climate change through its shares of greenhouse gases emission, which in turn affect planet water cycle. Adding another layer of uncertainties and risks for food production, it is predicted that both South Asia and Southern Africa will be the most vulnerable region to climate change or related food strategy by 2030. Four critical aspects of agricultural engineering in the soil and water. Where you are seated, under you, there is water, and we refer to it as groundwater. We have environmental and health. We have integrated water management for agriculture and irrigation. We have smallholder water and land management scheme and soil conservation. So before I read my 10 commandments, before I can continue, sometime in 1986, sir, I was in Israel for about three months to participate in the advanced irrigation and soil management. And from there, I traveled to one of their technological institutions. They call it Technion Institute of Technology in Haifa. And a lot of Nigeria has gone there to study agric engineering. That was when I saw what we call the, the 11th commandment that has been written by Louis Damick on soil conservation in Jerusalem in 1939. And this 10th commandment relates you and me. Because by the time you live here today and you don't practice it, you will suffer the consequences. He said, thou shalt inherit the holy earth as a faithful steward. It's very important. Conserving its resources and productivity from generation to generation. Thou shalt safeguard thy fish from soil erosion, thy living water from drying up, thy forest from desolations, and protect thy hills from overgrazing by the heads. That thy descendant may have abundance forever. But if any, 
shall fail in this stewardship, including you and I. Of the land, thy fruitful field shall become sterile stony grounds and wasting gullies, and thy descendants shall decrease and live in poverty or perish from off the face of the earth. And uh, that makes me to divide what I've been going through into three different sections, my Vice Chancellor. We have the rainfall impact on soil surfaces. We have the erosion and soil conservation. We have irrigation and food security. The rainfall impact, sometimes even before 1997, when we were studying the interaction with rainfall and the soil, it became very obvious for us that we needed to know the intensity of rainfall, its impact on soil surface. But at that time, the knowledge of intensity was very, very low. In fact, very scanty. In fact, it is not available. So what we did was to use the rainfall data that has been there for almost 30 years, and then study for three years again, to be able to arrive at an equation which I developed by the year 1996 to 1997. And he said the intensity will be of rainfall in millimeter per hour will be equal to 3.49 raised to power of kinetic energy. But kinetic energy, again, is another different thing because by the time the rain is falling, it's having an impact on the soil surface. And of course, it depends on the type of soil. We have, soils, soils, uh, we have something like clay. We have sandy soil. We have seed loam. We have all kinds of soil. So the impact of this rainfall has every impact on the soil, which we refer to as the kinetic energy of rainfall and how it's detaching the soil particles. Since I have the challenges of developing kinetic energy before I can do my intensity, I develop a relationship, which is kinetic energy will be 14.38 Nepalian log of the rainfall. All you needed to do is just to know the amount of rainfall for that particular period, and then take it to the equation I developed earlier and determine the intensity of rainfall in millimeter per hour. But at the end of the day, sir, the higher the intensity of rainfall, the higher the kinetic energy, the more the soil is disturbed into soil particles. And the more it is transported, and that is what we normally refer to as erosion. Apart from whatever we have been doing, that soil detachment that depends on the rainfall and the kinetic energy is divided into various forms. Because the rainfall have different diameter of droplets. Some rainfalls has bigger diameter, some very small, that is when you can see that some rain will be falling. The people selling food in the market, they are also doing their something because what? The rain is falling with a very small, minute drop diameter. But if it is a rainfall that is heavy with big in impact of uh, the raindrop, you will quickly go inside because staying outside for less than 30 seconds, your clothes will be wet. So the detached particles that this rain is causing are transported by two mechanisms. Displacement caused by physical impact, which is flash, and the particle entrainment caused by overland flow, depending on the Sometimes, as recorded by one of my students in 2014, Gada, that gave us, from what he found out, that the soil in this funab contains 87% of sand. 87% of sand. That will mean that uh, between natural rainfall and simulated rainfall that I wanted to do, we have to see how that 
uh, the sand here resists erosion, resists raindrop impact before we can continue to go. So what did we do? We just took a little of the sample of the rain that fell for a period of time in storm, and then we used the rain for kinetic energy. We calculated the intensity. We now discover the soil detached and average soil detached from that plot of land. At the end of the day, for a bare soil, you will discover that the red line you are seeing is for a bare soil, which means the amount of soil removed from a bare soil that has no vegetation cover is very, very high. The green is the soil that we, okay, we incorporated some organic matter, treated soil. And we discovered that this treated soil uh, reduced the impact of uh, soil detachment from them. And the volume of rainfall, you can see, and see the detachment that is there. So as we raise the rainfall simulator to a higher level, the amount of soil detached is increased. And we concluded that raindrops are a major cause of soil splash at the earth's surface and make the soil lose susceptible easily to soil erosion. The, we concluded that the higher the calculated rainfall intensity and rainfall kinetic energy, the greater the amount of soil detached from bare soil. Because of this uh, relationship, which I, I established a long time ago in 1997, that is to be able to evaluate the kinetic energy that has a relationship with rainfall, I use it and compare it with other kinetic energy that has been developed across the globe. There, is, there are a group of Indians that were in Zaria, ABU Zaria at that time, we call them Puwa and Kassan. We have Hudson in Southern Rhodesia, which is now called uh, Zimbabwe, if I'm correct. He has his own equation. Wismay and Smith developed his own in 1965. Then Masha and Palmer. By the time we finished and we subjected them to our own uh, raw data that we took on the field and calculated their kinetic energy, I discovered the kinetic energy that I developed fair well with that of Kua and Kassam since 1967, fair well with that of uh, Hotsin in 1965, and a little bit of, uh, of uh, Masha and Palmer. So that gave me the confidence that that relationship that I, I developed can work very well depending on the type of soil. And so there's an equation we've been working on. What are we working on? We've been working on the soil loss, the erosion. But there's an equation called universal soil loss equation, which you see there. So we decided to rearrange the R and K, which is the most important thing of this soil, soil loss and that universal soil loss equation. R is the erosivity of the rainfall, while K is the erodibility of the soil. We did all those analyses, and then we subject the soil detachment to those two equations. And we discover that uh, the observed soil loss from bare soil is higher. And then the observed soil loss for vegetation is, is lower, which is telling us that if you have a vegetation that covers your soil, the amount of soil that will be removed, which will cause soil erosion, will be minimal. So we normally recommend that you should plant grass. The mic is okay. Okay, thank you. The research validated the inversal soil loss equation for a selected location in north central Nigeria, which we studied. And there was a strong correlation over a short period between erosivity index and observed soil losses. And so we gave that recommendation to ministry, to consultants, whoever wanted to have it, that this is it. Here in FUNAP, studying the soil, of which the soil scientists have told us that majority of the soil here is named Iwo, Iwo soil, Iwo series soil. So we look at it and we discover that, of course, in this place is sandy, 
but in wood city soil is the most dominant. So we subjected them to about three, three tests. We run the infiltration equation, both cumulative equations and, and cumulative uh, infiltration. But there are three things that we, we noted that we are supposed to use. That the theta, that is soil moisture, soil moisture tension, and the soil temperature are very vital for the surviving of crops and for our soil. And the model equation obtained for that root zone at the depth is given equation eight below, which you can see. And we discovered that the soil, the whole city soil in Funab is quick draining with high infiltration rate. And therefore, if you wanted to establish irrigation practice in this part of the, of the world, you cannot be irrigating at a, at a rate of one week interval, which is the normal standard. Because this place is sandy, your irrigation practice will now be between two to three days at most because it's mostly sandy. What do we then do with erosion and conservation study? Sometimes during the course of my research, we have two types of uh, model that has been developed while I was in UK. We have what we call the Eurosem, which is European Soil Erosion Model, which is what we call e equation one there. And we have WEP, which is Water Erosion Prediction Model, basically uh, developed in US. That of uh, Eurosem is developed for the Euro people. So what I did was to pick them, study them, and arrange the parameters to put them. At the end of the day, after a series of tests and captures year by year, and I decided to look into the rainfall pattern as is equivalent to soil law, which is erosion. But the R square was 0 0.79. Okay, what did I do next? I did measure soil loss physically and weigh it against the predicted soil loss by those Eurosem. And what do I have? At the end of the day, the Eurosem performed better than the web in our soil in Nigeria or where I studied this. And that once we are able to measure amount of rainfall, you can measure your soil loss based on that equation 11. And I now discover that for BR soil, that relationship will exist for model one, which is R 0.98. And for model two, R is 4.2. So I, dis I discarded the, the uh, web uh, erosion model, which is not performing well, but Eurosem is performing well, and I was able to establish that relationship between soil loss and the rainfall amount. In other words, when the rainfall, you collect the amount, put it in the equation, you'll be able to guess what is the amount of soil loss in kilogram per meter square, which you can extend to, to hectares. There's something, after that, there's something that came as a soil loss tolerance limit for effective conservation measure. Soil loss tolerance limit is, is saying that when the rain falls, what is the threshold at which the soil is detached? Austin in Southern Rhodesia stated in his own area said, the, when the rain is falling and the intensity is about 25 millimeter per hour, then the erosion is initiated. So we all equally study it here. Say, okay, when the rain falls, what is the intensity at which our soil will continue to, to, to get loose? We did this and we equate it to the universal soil less equation. And we got a p-value of 0 0.12. That will mean that you make a ridge across the slope of your farm to about a 30 centimeter or 40 centimeter with a width close to about 40 centimeter. That will take care of any erosion and take care of any possible soil loss at that moment. 
the soil erodibility which we investigated, the soil erodibility is how effectively is the soil resisting this rainfall. It has to do with the soil. And so we have to study the soil texture. We have to study the aggregate, stability, shear strength, soil structures, infiltration capacity, soil depth, bulk density, soil organic matter, and chemical constituents. And then we evaluated the soil erodibility. When you see a negative value of the erodibility, it means that the erosion at that place is very low. So where we carry this study, we discover that uh, the soil within that study area has the poor erodibility indices because we recorded a negative value. And the occurrence of an almost surface runoff during which fine soil particles are carried away as a result of movement of water and soil surface of that place is low. And therefore, we recommended that, well, if that is the case, the, the frequency at which you irrigate if you are in this type of soil cannot be so frequent because of that erodibility. You establish it, and then you know if it can resist erosion or not. But as a consultant, when you wanted to design a vegetative canal or ordinary canal to convey water for irrigation. There are parameters we normally look for. These parameters is available in the textbook. And we said, no, we have to locate and design and find out our own value for N, which is the most critical in that managed formula. So we assemble all kinds of uh, equation that has to do with uh, money roughness coefficient. We do both for disturb and all disturb, sandy, on sandy, clay, disturb, not disturb. Um, then the time like equation equated with the other, we look at their value. And we discover that the time like equation, which is the last one, predicted very well for time of concentration because when you want to design and the rain is falling, you need to know and be conscious of the time of concentration of that rainfall. And so when we have N, there is no need to uh, consulting any hard book that is sent to us. You will take a value that we have pre prepared and you use this value and it guide the designer that is uh, designing your uh, vegetative canal, irrigation canal everywhere, and then you use it without necessarily uh, importing any value or looking for any value that is brought to us outside. Again, in the midst of this, the Food and Agricultural Organization asks us to investigate what they call water harvesting. And they call it water system assessment of water harvesting in Western Africa, the case of Nigeria. We went about in two, two agroecological sites of Nigeria in the upper region. What is this uh, water harvesting, if I'm supposed to, to tell you, these are the water collected in a depression. Thank you. Mr. Vice Chancellor, these are the water collected in a depression on the farm in the arid and semi arid region. And we, we as Nigeria, as the government, they don't take note. They are not aware, they don't make use of it. But our Rural farmers, including the Fulanese, including the other people in this region, move their houses very close to these uh, depressions where water has been collected. One, they use it to irrigate their farms, tomato, other agricultural vegetables they wanted to grow. And then their, their, the farmer also, I mean, their heads, their car also go there to take water and they also produce. But what we find out is that this water do not last between more than three to three and a half to four months. Meanwhile, in the north, the rain will fall. If you add maximum of four months, uh, you'll be okay. But now the climate change is changing that because when we are there, we can predict exactly when the rain will start, what, when the farmer 
be able to go and, and grow their crops. But at that time, we went about, you know, taking, taking the measurements in this region. We limited ourselves to two agroecological zones, the one very close to Kano and the one around Medjugorje in charge. And we discovered, we studied this water that was collected. And we did analysis of water balance. And the location where this site is, and then the farmer and what they are doing, and how much they are also collecting from this. And we discovered that the farmer, they were okay when they were using these uh, water harvesting techniques that store, because it's not the same water harvesting that we practice in the east or here, of which you collect water from the roof and then you store it in the system. So these people rely on this water every year when the rain stops. And that's what they do, that's what they use to feed their cow. We also assess the economic impact of it. We discover they are doing well and they were okay. We also recognize the indigenous farming system as fulfilled the need established by the FAO for those farmers for obtaining more crop yield for every drop of water used. More of the picture that we took at that time, it was a very long time ago, so it, it came in a black and white. But those are the water that was collected, and you can see the farmer, you can equally see the cow uh, taking their turn in taking the water. At the end of the day, what is the general conclusion? The general conclusion, purely rain-fed, where, 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 is the, where is the general conclusion? I didn't know that the man is not even following me. Go and uh, they put in the general conclusion. Go on, go on. Yes, yeah, that is it. No, 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 that's it. That's it. That's it. Go back, go back. Yes, that, uh, go back again. Go back, down, 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 down. For God's sake, where have you been? I've been talking and you are not even following me. Go to slides. Uh, how do you do it? I saw it just now. Go one more step down. Go, go down, go down. I've passed all this area. I've go down, go down, go, go down, 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 go down. That's all. That's it. That's it. You are not even following me. I was just busy talking here. So what are my people saying? If you see this general conclusion, there is one that is purely rain-fed, there is one that is fully irrigated. If you follow the one of purely rain-fed after our research, we discover that the field will need conservation practices. Or if the rain stops, you will need supplementary irrigation. And then the idea of water harvesting will come. But if you go towards that is fully irrigated, you will have to battle with the groundwater irrigation. You have to also have a surface water irrigation to provide it. But at the end of the day, either rain fed or fully irrigated, you have a drainage. And that will solve your problem. Irrigation and food security, Mr. Five Chancellor. Sometimes ago, sir, when I had my PhD students and we are doing what we do, we developed a drip irrigation system for FUNAL. We develop a drip irrigation system for FINAM. But before I tell you the, the, the history of this uh, irrigation, what, why are we talking of irrigation? We are talking of irrigation because there is no longer rain and there is a dry period. The dry period, we, we, I, I connote it to mean the climate change, the weather, when the rain stops falling. So when the rain stopped falling, we also investigate the impact of this climate variability on crop yields 
went to Togo and we choose about five towns there. My goodness. Move, 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 move. Yes, that's it, that's it. As I'm talking, you say you will follow me. You are not following me. We chose about uh, four different towns in, uh, in southern Togo and it verified the impact of temperature on them. And then we discovered that there is an increased warming up of temperature for these crops. And as a result of that, it affected, it affected the, the, the yield of that crop in, uh, in Togo. And um, once we do that, what we did again was to use statistical analysis to find out the variety of crop or what can cause them. Well, the major thing that we find out was that there was increase in temperature. We even used over 30 years record of rainfall, of uh, rainfall of uh, temperature on that region. And then we discover how the farmers were getting a decrease in their yield as a result of climate impact. At the end of the day, we also moved to the trend analysis of this uh, climate change in Southern Togo, which we use statistical analysis to in fact, tell you that uh, a measure of the correlation of a variable with time and our source simply offer information as to the direction and measure of the significance of the observed trend. What is that trend? That trend is that there is a global warming up that is coming up gradually from the, from the north toward the south of Togo. Why we do that, I have gone, I have gone, I do not know where you are. Now, the implication of that is that, yes, the inform, thank you, because these people, they are not showing anything. The information provided by this study can be support at local level, decision makers in order to monitor flood and drought. Therefore, agricultural planning and government policies in this area should be based on recent rainfall. Analysis of dry spell. We also conducted it here in Nigeria, as we did in Togo, in our Sudano and Sahelian region of Nigeria. And we develop a relationship that the assumption, I do not know where you can read that, that the assumption that a 30% probability of occurrence of this date can be guided to obtaining the most probable showing date, which turned out by using figure 11 to be 163rd day of the calendar year where you can now go and plant. We equally prove it by showing the graphs, you see four graphs, the figure 11, figure 11. We also investigated crop quantification, quantification in semi-harried region using precipitation effective variables. We also use statistical analysis to get to our results. And our results is simply say a new drought indexing method, CPE, using PEV has been proposed for quantifying the drought conditions and occurrence in any semi-arid or arid region. There is a, that situation that in Nigeria, we are still mostly depend on rain-fed agriculture. Our irrigation is still minimum. Our irrigation is still minimum. So we have to start looking gradually into what we can do to be able to increase the irrigation system in Nigeria, not to rely on rainfall because of the climate change is coming. When you wanted to plant, the rain may not come. And when you plant, your seed will dry up. I'm just to show you region where irrigation is practiced in the world. In the Asia and Oceania, they are the one having the biggest, 72.7. You can see, you can see it. Region where irrigation is practiced in the world. Yes, that's it. Africa is what consuming 4.2 percent. In Nigeria or in Africa, we practice less of irrigation than the other people. 
And we have discovered that if you know, note the poverty level after that slide, after that slide, the next one. Yes, if you note the property, poverty level, low, moderate, and high. And what is it? How our land is degrading. And we are not even being serious. We are not even being serious. We are classified under the high degradation trend of highly degraded lands. And therefore, our production level will also go down because the soil is not well treated. Overhead irrigation and surface irrigation. Go there, you will see it. We have, uh, yes, we have overhead irrigation, which is pivot type of a system. We have surface irrigation. The next is that surface irrigation using siphon tubes, yes, and drip irrigation. We also now see that if you don't want our children to look like the one on the drought, on the left, farming and drought effect, you can see those human beings. I don't even know if they are Indians or from top Africa. But see the other right, effect of rainfall or irrigation. They were very happy because they saw a good growth. And the, the cheeks of those two boys, you can see very, looking very robust. It was observed that the drip irrigation is the most appropriate option. But the drip irrigation system requires a careful design procedure that is highly sensitive to crop type. I've been told that my time is uh, almost gone. So this result agree with food and agree organization what we did with the software that was developed for FUNAP because we practiced both okra, planting of okra with it and using those thoughts again to support the soil. This software in, in, involved crop water requirement model. The second one requires hydraulic and hydrology design model. Why the third one is irrigation water requirement? These three are combined into one as a software for FUNAB irrigation system. And we practice it, and then you can see what we get next slides have gone beyond that. According to Adewumi 2011, the state of international water resources management in the development of water in order to ensure sustainability. This is only possible if existing community-based institutions develop a sustainable, sustainable collaboration with the agency of renewable. Sir, Mr. Chairman, sir. The water network, the water network that was brought here was as a result of our activity that was here is the one representing the Southwest to develop capacity building network in the area of water. And I'm happy you attended one of our, of our staff that is now the national chairman of that. And we are doing it, but it's like we still need the cooperation of the vice chancellor, the university management, to help us to promote this one because it's, it's situated in the sixth geopolitical region of Nigeria. And we are happy that it is here in Funa. So all the institutions in Southwest, they are member of that network. We also, uh, in the course of what we are doing, test the wastewater that are coming from our house and some other area to see if they are good. By the time we tested them, we discover the use of this water without proper treatment is not good for our, our drinking or using it for irrigation. We also compare runoff coefficients. Because when you wanted to design, you wanted to know what is the value of N, which is the runoff coefficient. We did that and we employ, and then we got a value of N. We got a value of N, which we put in the Izzard, Izzard model equation. That we now give us time of concentration, the length of slope, the moisture content, the slope itself, and the intensity of rainfall. And then we add N. We can easily calculate our time of concentration. We can easily calculate our time of concentration to go. During one of the World, World Bank work that we did in Jigawa, about 1,400 hectares was given to us, to IR at that time. 
I was the two of us as an engineer, my senior colleague, who were just measuring infiltration, infiltration rate on the carrying these infiltrometer rings. By the time we finished, it was a laborious work. So we now design and, and compare with the subtivity measured value and came up with the equation that instead of going to the field to measure, use this equation, you get the infiltration rate of that. So instead of carrying double ring infiltrometer up and down. Mr. Chairman, sir, my first chancellor. The ARCN competitive research, this for now was the only one of which the irrigation proposal was approved. We use indigenous technology. We use indigenous technology to be able to come out as if you were in the hospital bed, how they put drip into your system. That was what we did. We now use it on the plant. And it did very well. And we, we practiced it, we tested it. And for that purpose, I will want them to go to the very good, move again. Uh -huh. You can, if you go back a little, you will see our, our, you will see, where is the, no, 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 not that one. Go back a little, go back. Yeah, that, that is it. Right there as you are going to Ipsera, that is where the one you gave to College of Engineering, where we installed this uh, drip irrigation available, adopted indigenous technology. It won the award, but suddenly the ARCN, said they have no money for the third year. We're just going to the second year. Mr. Vice Chancellor, your money, 26 million, is stayed there. So you'll be able to pick it up. It stayed there. When we did it and we showed them, show where the, the crop germinated. Uh -huh, that's it. That was what we used and the crop germinated here on our soil. And I showed it to them in Abuja. And then for us to now go to the industry, for the industry to now develop that technology so that we can now give to our farmer. The ARC now said, the money they promise us that is available, they stop. But some people that have project of one year were able to escape. But because our own was three years, they said no. And those are my students that are working during the, that indigenous one. Let me quickly go. I'm talking of that uh, irrigation. Go to the deterioration of that irrigation canal. Down, 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 down. Yeah, that's it, that's it. The federal government established 11 river basin authority and their, their purpose is to develop irrigation, develop the water, water management system of that area and then practice irrigations and do dams. But that irrigation today, when you go there, look at it, the people are even going there to wash their, their, their clothes. They are no longer using it. You can see the accumulation of water and you cannot plant anything on that kind of a soil. Next, you can see salty area. Salty area, you can't do anything to it. And the uh, evidences of salinity buildup and water low condition in some sector were observed and we left those areas. So when they have been talking of dredging, the water that came out of River Tiga going to Kano for about 50 kilometers was having a very muddy thing, if you see it. So what we needed to do was to, again, take a boat to see the amount of sediment that are settled. When we saw the amount of sediment that are settled, we brought in a dredger that we able to remove it so that we can get a, a good thing. At the end of the day, at the end of the day, that is a very good clean water that, uh, a channel that we are seeing. The impact of agricultural production and food security, impact of flooding. Just in Nigeria, here last year, I presented a paper in Indonesia of which I presented the, the problem of food security as a result of flooding. Go to the next slide. You can see by your left, the, when it was, this was 2022, last year, the, how the water, you know, take over our road completely and they were suffering for almost two weeks before they can move. What is it? Our farm product, which is what is concerning me, you can see the effect of flooding on them. What are they going to harvest at the end of the day? Nothing. Yes, 
The poor farmer in low income in the affected area of Nigeria are most vulnerable and the least able to adopt these uh, changes. Presently, the world's cultivated area has grown by 12%, and therefore the struggling for the next available land is what we are doing. Me, my vice chancellor, almost getting to the end, do not be discouraged. The FAO commissioners, FAO commissioners by airplane to study the irrigation system in the southwest of Nigeria. We went around and we saw a deplorable type of irrigation system. With all this river basin, with all these things, nothing is being done. Nothing is being done. You can see it if you, if you are looking at it and putting it down, you can see it. We were in Jibia, we were in Talata Mambara, we were in Sokoto, we were in Bakolori, we were in Tafa, we were everywhere. The situation of the irrigation system was boring. At the end of the day, where are my students? Yeah, maybe that is the time, the first time you are seeing a parabolic uh, structure, taking water from Nigeria even to Niger. That's at Gibeah. That is at Gibeah where we investigated. That is a parabolic structure. If you have not seen it, look at it very well because uh, that was where it was constructed. You may not be able to see it anywhere. You will see Kana or Trapezoidia anywhere. But that is it. And that water goes directly into, into Niger, crosses our border, and we are supplying water to Niger farmers. To Niger for farmers. That's Nigerian government. That's OK. I also did a little work about NADA. It's OK. Conclusions. Are, the conclusion is this. Raindrops are a major cause of soil splash at the earth's surface and make the soil loose and susceptible to soil erosion. The FUNAB soil is quick draining with high infiltration rate. Our empirical relationship was established as a basis for tool for effective management. Based on the knowledge of erodibility index of the soil evaluated, ability to know the amount of soil loss in a field for a particular rainfall effect can easily be measured. In the area of water harvesting, it was established that water storage facility in a depression exists. And in the area of climate change, the increasing trend in minimum temperature and maximum temperature implies an increase in evapotranspiration across West African subregion. Recommendation Federal Government of Nigeria should help the farmer through an extension agent. The water harvesting suggested the harnessing of uh, runoff water often left to waste. Conflict of farmer with herdsmen have been recognized as a serious socioeconomic factor when we did this study of water harvesting. The River Basin Development Authority needs to be restructured in such a way that it should be cleaned center. Federal Government of Nigeria should help the farmer through an extension agent in ministry, education sector, and local government area of the country to construct an effective conservation measure. Acknowledgement. We are, I'm now in acknowledgement. All, all, all my teachers that have taught me, Mr. Vice Chancellor, distinguished member of the audience, I would like to acknowledge some of the noble individuals. I cannot be mentioning them because of time, but your name is here and I indeed know what it is. The, go to the next slides. The God that is, I am that I am. Allow me to start by giving honor and glory to the almighty father. I'm sure my vice chancellor, you know I'm a complete over. The mother and father is gone. I'm a complete over. So I give God the glory that I'm standing here. I do not know. Yes, next slide. Yes, that's my vice chancellor that is seated. That's my vice chancellor. Next, next, yes, those are the vice chancellor here. Our daddy is here. You, you can see him there, number two there. Our daddy is here, he's here. But I came in when he has left, finished. The work has felt the effect. I came here under Professor IF Adu, delayed. Delayed. 
These are the current principal officers. I also salute them. They are there. My father was a chief. He left me stranded, but I'm, I'm still forging ahead. Still forging ahead. The extended family, they are there. You can keep on going down for the extended family. Their names are there. But most importantly, but most importantly, my old student association of 75 set, they are there. The colleagues at ABU also recognize them. One of them is here from a long seated, a former vice chancellor of uh, Fountain University. So I also uh, appreciate the time I've spent in Zaria and the time I've spent in Funa. Very, very good and challenging. I challenge and congratulate and thank all the members of College of Engineering, my Vice Chancellor. Just a little reminder. I came in here in November 2005. And by 2007, November thereabout, I was fulfilled. I was fulfilled that what I came to do, I had already achieved it. What happened? What happened? Our first degree holder has not graduated. And we have our colleague with MSc surrounding us. That if we allow these people to go outside this university, the other university will snatch them and will be stranded. So we wrote a letter to Professor Balogu. My then dean, Professor Ayedon, our late Professor DBC, myself, and Dr. Lanyaju, Professor Lanyaju, we wrote a letter that they should allow us to start a postgraduate training. We have more than eight or nine professors outside helping us. Professor Balogun approved with 50% deduction of their school fees. Today, my vice chancellor, the 73rd inaugural lecturer was a product of that. My day near you is a product of that. All the heads of departments is a product of that. And you can see how, how I can be more than happy. I was fulfilled after two years. I know I fulfilled my obligation. Well, please go, go down, go down, go down. Yeah, that, 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 that's it, that's it, that's it. I lost a friend during the course of my FAO research. We were together, they gave us a vehicle. The armband, armband bandit killed him. The day I came here for interview in 2004, 6th of January, was the day we were burying him at Ibadan. And that makes me not to forget it. We were very, very close, but it's going to be with the Lord because of the war. Yes, next. Next, yes, my family. Yeah, now you can see I have an in-law to my right. I have an in-law to my left. What a wonderful thing. The next, you can see them surrounding me during my daughter. In, initially, I was thinking to have boys is all my aim. I now discover that when my daughter left me now, no more ladies, and I can't go back to this. Do not let any one of them say they are looking for boys. Let them be producing female for us. That's my boy. That is a beard woman. Is there? Uh, that is that is uh, my daughter during her wedding with her husband. They are there in front of you. They are there in front of you. They are there in front of you. And can you see my tie and kind of? Can you see them? Can you see them? Where is he? Look at, he's, he's gotten married, he's married, he's married. The other one is still doing guy. He's still doing guy. I don't know what he's waiting for. My grandchildren, the daughter, my son, grandson, my children, can't you see them? They are warriors. They are warriors. Mr. Vice Chancellor, I want your judges to permit me that to obtain one minute silence for this woman. For this woman. By standing up and we we'll obtain a one minute silence for her. 
he was with me, turning thick and thin. And when he's supposed to be enjoying the fruit of our labor, she left. But we thank God for what he has done. May our soul rest in perfect peace. We are there. And uh, the next slide, I want the visit to see me when I was young. Yeah, that's it. That's it. And I just said, that is just a little of the story. He said, I cannot say all. If I didn't bring half of what I have done. And the research, as I've said, has just begun. And I say thank you for listening. And, and I want you also to do this prayer with me. Wherever you are, whatever you are doing, I want you to please pray. As you are pray, using it for yourself, kindly remember me. That the Lord, after praising God, and I know that he has granted me mercy for me to be able to talk here this uh, afternoon. Oh, Lord God, I say, grant me serenity to accept the things I cannot change. The courage to change the things I can, and wisdom to know the difference. Thank you, Mr. Vice Chancellor. Please have your seats, have your seats. Thank you very much. Prof, please have your seat. On behalf of the Governing Council, the Senate, management, staff, and students, we want to thank Professor Johnson Kayo de Adewumi for delivering the 76th inaugural. Professor Johnson Kayo de Adewumi for delivering the 76th inaugural lecture of the university. Prof, thank you, sir. Um, we have come to the end of the lecture, but before we go, please permit me to once again appreciate and welcome members of the immediate family of Professor Adewumi and the extended family. Please stand up for recognition. I think one of the twins, the daughter, the grandchildren, the cousins, uncles, in-laws, we welcome you. Thank you very much. Please have your seat. Also, I've greeted him the other time. We want to welcome specially Emeritus Professor Julius Amioba Okoje, our former Vice Chancellor and the former Executive Secretary of the NUC. Thank you for coming, sir. We recognize the presence of some former principal officers of the university. We welcome Professor Adeduru Enikume, the former acting Vice Chancellor. We welcome Professor Yemi Sierra former Deputy Vice Chancellor, academic. We welcome Professor Clement Adeofun, former Deputy Vice Chancellor, development. We also welcome Professor Helen Bordode, the chairperson of the Publications Committee. Also, it was introduced earlier, but please welcome with me Professor Bashiru Raji, former Vice Chancellor, Fountain University. You are welcome, sir. We also have in our midst, Mr. E.T. Abiodun, Director, Cywest Quara Poli. We have Are Adebare Elemide, the CDA Chairman of the inaugural lecturer. We have in our midst also Mrs. Oluwato Yindawudu, Deputy Registrar One Academic Staff Establishment. We welcome specially the members of the Redeemed Christian Church of God, Jesus Consulate II in Abe Okuta. You are welcome. We welcome specially also, while we appreciate all members of the academic community in our university, we specially welcome members of the College of Engineering and the Department of Agricultural and Bioresources Engineering. Uh -uh. That's good, that's good. You are welcome. You will wow. Great Funabites. We welcome each and every one of you. But before we leave, we want to specially appreciate the inaugural lecturer of today. So, Professor J.K. Adewumi, can you please rise to receive this from the university community?
the Federal University of Agriculture, Abe Obuta, presents this award of honor to Professor Johnson Kayode Adewume as the 76th inaugural lecturer of the university. Dated this day, Wednesday, 24th of May, 2023. Congratulations, sir. In addition, sir, from the soils you classified, from the waters you worked upon, we have produced this on our campus. And so we're presenting this to you. Palm oil produced from our farm, palm wine produced from this university, and so on and so forth. Thank you very much, sir. Once again, congratulations. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, once again, we want to thank and appreciate you for being with us throughout this 76th inaugural lecture and lecture presented by our lecturer from the Department of Agric and Bioresources Engineering, Professor Johnson Kayo de Adewumi. I now hand over to the compare. Please a round of applause for the Vice Chancellor. I'll just a brief announcement before we leave. Um, the, the procession we exit this hall in reverse order through the center eye. The academic, the academic uh, staff will go through this door, exit A by my right. The special guest of uh, Professor Adewumi through exit B by my left. All the Colen family go to the Colen building behind this hall here for your entertainment. And every other staff, non-academic, everybody remains seated in the hall. So please may we rise for the Funab Anthem. National Anthem. Thank 
Please let's remain standing for the procession to leave the hall in reverse order. We want to appreciate every one of you that has a fun time to be in FUNAP for this 76th inaugural lecture of the university. We appreciate you very well. Uh, soil and water, the dynamics of the 11th commandment. I think by now we now know why this is the 11th commandment. Please, I want to take the special announcement. If you are the owner of a Mitsubishi car with Lagos number FKJ115BL, please, your car is obstructing kindly go and take it out of the road. Thank you, everybody. Thank you for being here. Thank you for coming around. We look forward to seeing you next time when we host another inaugural lecture. Thank you very much.